United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best 90s cartoons of each year. Move it, football head! Hey, Arnold! Oh, nice play, Shakespeare, but you're taking the ball! Curse you, Sam and Max! Wretched reps! I wanna be the very best. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the most beloved animated series released each year from 1990 to 1999. What was your favorite tune from the 90s? Let us know in the comments. 1990 Tiny Toon Adventures We're tiny, we're toony, we're all a little loony, and in this cartoony we're invading your TV. They're tiny, they're toony, they're the looniest way to kick off the decade. At the beginning of the 90s, Warner Brothers teamed up with Steven Spielberg to create a whole new generation of Looney Tunes descendants. Say, how about drawing me a best friend, a buddy, a compadre, someone I can talk to rabbit to rabbit? A girl? Welcome to the 90s. We were introduced to Buster and Babs Bunny, No Relation, Plucky Duck, Hampton J. Pig, and many others. Mentored by the original stars of Looney Tunes, this all-star cast entertained viewers every weekday with their zany adventures throughout Acme Acres and beyond. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the spoiled Montana Max or ran for their lives from Elmira. While kid version cartoons were nothing new at the time, Tiny Toons stood above the crowd thanks to its hilarious spoofs and relatable life lessons. I don't want to do this. I have to. I'm Batman. 1991. Rugrats. The strong era of Nicktoons began by giving us a better look at life through a toddler's eyes. Rugrats follows the daily misadventures of a group of imaginative babies when their parents aren't around or are just way too distracted. Angelica couldn't have broke the lamp because she was taking her afternoon nap. And I couldn't have broke it because I was... Hey, wait a minute. Angelica, didn't you already take a nap this morning before you came over? Along with the usual toddler shenanigans, this series definitely hinted at the dangers of spoiling or ignoring your children. It also never shied away from serious topics like growing up without a mother. We still tear up at Chucky's Mother's Day episode. This is her diary. She started keeping it when, uh, when, she, when she was in the hospital. The last thing she wrote in it was a poem for you. With over 100 episodes, three theatrical films, and a sequel spin-off, it still holds the record for one of the longest running and most iconic Nickelodeon programs. And that's without counting the 2021 Paramount Plus reboot. Angelica! Did Tommy do that? Yes, he did, Aunt Dee Dee. Babies are so mean. 1992, Batman the Animated Series. My God. Yes, it would move me to tears if I still had tears to shed. 1992 was such a big year for cartoon superheroes that we struggled to pick which one deserved this spot. I don't understand. Is there a Bad problem? I have to serve you jerks from the college, but I ain't putting up with any trouble from their kind. Skin color prejudice? That's so pathetic, it's almost quaint. It ain't. While we love X-Men for faithfully capturing the mutant struggles with prejudice, we had to give it to the series that redefined DC's Dark Knight, Batman the Animated Series. Even for a kid's show, this series carried a mature, complex tone that stayed true to the original comics while fleshing out gimmicky villains into tragic or relatable figures. It's also responsible for the creation of Harley Quinn, who would eventually make her way into DC's mainstream and become a major player in the Batman franchise long after the series end. Life used to be so placid. Won't you please put down that acid and say that we're sweethearts again? 1993, Animaniacs. Following the success of Tiny Toon Adventures, Spielberg and Warner Brothers combined forces again to create the totally insane hit of 1993, Animaniacs. Oh 
ultimately creating three new characters, the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot. Oh, yes! This animated sketch comedy series had no shortage of variety in shorts. We tuned in to the zany misadventures of the Warner siblings, the hopeless endeavors of Pinky and the Brain, the nostalgic chaos of Slappy Squirrel, and many more. But I was out. We were onto a can of peas, a big dish of peas when I said in July. Oh, sorry. Yes, always. Even to this day, this show is praised for its satirical comedy, catchy songs, and being able to touch the hearts of both younger and older audiences. The series' massive success spawned multiple spin-offs and a 2020 Hulu reboot. Fortunately, the new series manages to capture what made the original so iconic. It. It's the Warner Brothers. And the Warner Sisters! 1994, Gargoyles. You'd expect a revered edutainment show like The Magic School Bus would be up Disney's alley, right? Seatbelts, everyone! Actually, we can thank PBS for that one. Meanwhile, Disney was experimenting with a surprise melodrama series. What were you doing in my castle? You... you can talk? Who... what are you? My kind have no names, but you humans call me Goliath. Your kind? You mean there's more than one of you? A clan of mythical creatures known as gargoyles is reawakened after a thousand years and must adjust to modern day New York. They also defend the city from various supernatural threats that include a fellow gargoyle named Demona. Given how colorful and upbeat Disney's programs were at the time, no one expected them to even attempt such a serious, story-driven, almost Shakespearean show on par with Batman the Animated Series. And yet they pulled it off and achieved a much-deserved cult following for taking such a chance. Uh, you're gonna explain all this, right? I had a nightmare, Elisa. Now we must get home and make sure it does not come true. 1995, Pinky and the Brain. Gee, Brain, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. One of the most popular sketches on Animaniacs followed two genetically altered lab mice, Pinky and the Brain, on their hopeless quest for world domination. Two years after their TV debut, the duo managed to score their own spin-off series that continues their hilarious, never-ending journey. By studying the conquerors of days gone by, I'll discover the mistakes that made them go awry. So that you can make the same mistakes if you just try. It manages to be on par with the original thanks to its smart comedy and the chemistry between our favorite lab mice. Unfortunately, the network tried to push for a comedy trio after a while which resulted in the less revered spin-off, Pinky, Elmira, and the Brain. Thankfully, the 2020 Animaniacs reboot brought the duo back to their roots and successfully proved that less is more. Pinky, I'd be worried this drivel is turning your mind soft, but you can't mash what is already mush. Narf! Precisely. 1996, Hey Arnold. As much as we'd love to discuss the Transformers franchise first CGI series, we thought it was best to indulge in a little slice of life for 1996. Big butt? How do you feel? Uh, oh. In a word, prime. Hey Arnold follows the life and times of the titular football-headed fourth grader. Armed with eternal optimism, he goes out of his way to try and improve the lives of his friends and neighbors. Well, I brought you some candy to make it up to you. Oh, that's nice of you, Arnold, but really, you didn't have to. Here, let me help you with that. Arnold also struggles to survive his sometimes vicious secret admirer, Helga Pataki. While mostly a comedy, this series had a surprising level of depth and was never afraid to subtly tackle heavy subjects. So nobody's ever noticed you. And there was someone. Hi, nice bow. Huh? After ending on a cliffhanger, the 2017 Jungle Movie revival gave this Nicktoon the satisfying conclusion it deserved. Mom, Dad, you're really back. Hey, hey Arnold. Arnold. 1997, Pokemon. Oh, hi, Pikachu. Pika. 
It's also known as electric mouse. It's usually shy, but can sometimes have an electrifying personality. I see what you mean. As much as we want to praise South Park as one of the most insightfully vulgar cartoons, we're giving 1997's entry to one of the most successful video game adaptations ever, Pokemon. Hey, you kids faith healing in front of my clinic? Cause I got a couple patients in here could use a good time machine. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Go back to the 90s! The anime follows young trainer Ash Ketchum and his partner Pikachu as they travel all around the world on Ash's journey to become a Pokemon master. Most video game adaptations are lucky enough to last a few years. My nose, what happened? The stink dissolved off my face! Hmm? Oh. oh yeah, I almost forgot! The cartoonist never gave me a nose! Hey! But the Pokemon franchise has well surpassed expectations by lasting over two decades, issuing over 1,000 episodes and leading to 20 movies. This TV show was the first introduction to the franchise for many. It effortlessly wowed viewers with pulse-pounding battles, comedic character quirks, and plenty of heartfelt moments that brought the Pokémon world to life. 1998, The Powerpuff Girls. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect superhero cartoon of 1998. Every day, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup dedicated their lives to fighting crime and protecting the city of Townsville all before bedtime. The show was packed with wide pop culture appeal and humor, but what really made this Cartoon Network classic such a hit was its energetic pacing and how it never shied away from really intense fight scenes. Seriously, if you took just one look at these cute little girls, would you believe them capable of kicking a bad guy's teeth out? While there may have been attempts at trying to reboot the franchise, newer versions can't quite catch the same magic the original had. Come on, Buttercup! You want to party? Isn't this what you wanted? You guys, stop! This isn't you! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 1999, SpongeBob SquarePants. It was insanely hard to decide which cartoon from the end of the decade deserved to be on this list. Rusty Cray, yeah, 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 yeah. Pizza is the pizza, yeah, for you and me. The year gave us the hilariously smart Futurama, the zany Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and the parody sitcom madness of Family Guy. They're as stuffy as the stuffiest of special interest groups. Make a joke about your bowels and they order in the troops. However, closing off the 90s is the Nicktoon that's become a household name at this point, SpongeBob SquarePants. It's practically impossible to find anyone who doesn't know of this plucky little square dude's misadventures under the sea. The show has given us too many quotable lines and iconic scenes to count. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. It's no mystery how the late Steven Hillenburg's passion project managed to survive for over two decades and become one of Nickelodeon's most memorable cartoons. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.